The whole point of having two parents with different genetic backgrounds is to make sure the next generation will be variable and unpredictable, for evolution's sake. But what the farmer and gardener want is exactly the opposite, particularly when chance throws up a valuable new variety of life. It's a coccus, my favourite, and the story behind it goes something like this. In the year 1829, a certain Mr Cox was having an apple after his Christmas dinner. There were nine pips in the apple, and Mrs Cox, being a frugal soul, planted them out in a pot on the mantelpiece. The apple had come from a tree in their garden, which was a variety called a Ribston Pippin. Now, early in the year, Mrs Cox had noticed some bees buzzing around their tree, and she'd seen that those bees had just come from an apple tree next door, which was called a Blenheim Orange. Out of interest, she tied a ribbon round the particular branch in question, just to see if it would set fruit. Well, it did, and Mr Cox's Christmas apple was one of the results. Of the nine pips that Mrs Cox planted, only six actually germinated and grew into plants. Four of them turned out to be crab apples. One of them eventually produced a moderately good cooker, but the last one grew up to produce eating apples of outstanding quality. And that cross between a Blenheim orange and a Ribston pippin is what we call a Cox's orange pippin. Well, I don't know how accurate that is as history. It makes a good story anyway. But it does emphasise one very important thing, that apple trees, like most plants, don't breed true. And what that means is that a pip from an apple like this is extremely unlikely to grow up to be a tree in any way similar to the tree this apple originally came from. Well, Mr Cox's apple tree blew down long, long ago before the First World War, in fact. But I'm standing at the moment in front of another very historic specimen, because this is the original Bramley. And the story behind it is much the same as the story behind the Coxes, except that in this case it was a Miss Mary Ann Brailsford who planted the pip in a pot on her mantelpiece around the time of the Battle of Waterloo. But the tree grew up to produce what are probably the best cooking apples in the world, with exactly the right combination of particular characteristics, exactly the right sweetness, acidity, texture, the thickness of peel, colour and so on. Now, what gives the, the apples those particular characteristics is the genetic makeup of the tree. There must in fact be a gene or a set of genes for each one of them. And it is that genetic makeup of the tree that makes the tree produce Bramley apples and no others.